You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market updates and trading strategies. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the OptionsInsider.com and co-hosts Alex the Viceroy Jacobson from Options Express, Uncle Mike Tussaw from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionFit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Options Express by Charles Schwab. Don't spend time worrying about your broker at Options Express by Charles Schwab. Security, stability, and account protection are the most important responsibilities to our customers. Secure account access, enhanced financial protection, entrusted with over $7 billion in customer assets, established financial stability. Options Express by Charles Schwab lets you trade with confidence. Stocks, options, and futures all in one account. Trade with a specialist. Visit www.optionsexpress.com to open your free account. Options Express by Charles Schwab is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. All right, everybody. That rock and tune means it is time once again for the Option Block, everyone's favorite bi-weekly source for all things options related my name is mark longo from the optionsinsider.com as well as from the ever scintillating options insider radio network no shortage of programs to choose from on said network uh, if you like this show and we know a lot of you do a lot of other programs out there that carve out different aspects of this and run with them in different directions if you want just education we've got those shows for you of course boot camp and options playbook if you want more of the unusual activity we of course have options oddities if you like what's trading but maybe from a, a futures options perspective we have the futures options roundtable if you're interested in the financial advisor space and you want to learn more about what your financial advisor should maybe bring to the table well then the advisor's option is for you if you like the tech that goes on that powers your trades and all the cool stuff that goes on behind the scenes after you click that mouse button trading tech talk is for you i'm sure i'm leaving oh volatility views of course if you like volatility vix all things vix all things vol all the time including other products that have vol like gold and oil and things like that we get into all of them there then volatility views is for you no shortage of programs and offerings for you here on the old network. You can find them, of course, on the flagship, the mothership, theoptionsinsider.com, as well as on iTunes or Stitcher or AHA Mobile or for the techno savvy among you out there. You can take the RSS feed and run and plug it into whatever program you like. So we're not picky here. And, of course, if you want to make it easy for yourself, we did it for you as well. You can go use our mobile app available for ios android and the fire os and of course on all those platforms you can find us to contact us you can reach out to us via email questions at the options insider.com via facebook or twitter or of course via the old-fashioned way which is kind of a newfangled way as well which is of course website comments or the website feedback form no shortage of ways for you guys to make your voices heard i'm going to feature a few of you on the old program today and joining me on said program, beaming in from the great state slash kingdom slash principality known as Maine, none other than the rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from Option Pit. Mr. P, I should say, Mr. G from the P. Welcome back to the show, sir. From the great principality of? <laughs> um, it is great to be back on a show that actually you're hosting that I don't have to host just by myself. Because it gets lonely sometimes. <laughs> Talking to yourself is so fun. You have 300 plus friends there to talk with you and yell at you in that show. So it's it's perfect. That's for true. You. And they're and they're doing it. 
<laughs> that's why we love the live component. And we're toying with adding that to some of the other shows on the network here, listeners. So I know a few of you have written in saying, hey, how can I join you guys live here on the show? And how can you do it? We've had some people actually in the past join us on the Skype calls, kind of like a, a audience in the background. It's not logistically that feasible to get a lot of people on board to do that. We're looking at a few other means, maybe Google Hangouts and a few others uh, to perhaps have a few of you join us live. Then we could have a little bit of a live interaction with you guys. So stay tuned for that. We may add that. We have a few live programs on the network now and perhaps some more to come down the road. Stay tuned for those. Speaking of things to come, we are also joined by the man, the myth, the legend beaming in from that great nation state slash city state known as St. Charles, Illinois. He is Uncle Mike Tussaud from RCM Wealth Advisors. Uncle Mike, welcome to the program, sir. Oh, happy to be here. I've never been referred to as a city state before, so that's exciting. Well, I actually was referring to St. Charles, but you could take that title as well. Are there walls around your the city of St. Charles, and are you at war with Sparta? That would pretty much qualify you as a city state. No, not at war with Sparta, but we get pretty pissed off at Geneva and Batavia every now and well, then. Well, there you go. So there you <laughs> Just go. Just kidding. So there is some there is some looming uh, looming city state potential out there. In good old St. Charles. Again, just driving that tourism board out there. If there was a tourism board in St. Charles, they would owe us a check or two by now because we've sent at least six people out there over the past few years. So there we go. Doing our doing our part for the local communities. All right. With the team assembled, of course, the Viceroy still can't join us listeners. We'll be back soon. So if you have questions or comments for them, send them in. We'll get them to him when he comes back. In the meantime, we're going to keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody, welcome to The Trading Block. This is indeed the portion of the program where we break down what caught our eye, what was interesting, what was lighting up our collective tapes over here in the broad market, as well as from some individual options perspectives. And it was yet another day of, of rally sentiment, of ballyhooism, to coin a new phrase, phrase out here in the old markets as we are once again approaching the once very popular, very sticky 2000 handle, the 2000 strike, closing today right around 1950, 19 and a half or so. Uh, in the S&P, up about 21 handles in the S&P, nearly 200 points in the Dow, and about a point and a half out there in the old Qs. Uh, VIX Cash continuing to take it on the chin, down about a point and a quarter to 16.63. So pretty much 50% of, or just about 50% of its recent high, right a little bit north of 31, uh, almost 32. Now we're down in the 16 handle range. So that shows you how there perhaps is some vol of vol at work there in the old markets, and it seems to be just the uh, the general sentiment continuing uh, to carry the markets. We talked on our last show that we were all kind of a little bit bored <laughs> by Apple. The market turned out not to be that bored, and the next couple of sessions uh, rallying it a bit, closing it up again today, up nearly 2% or nearly two handles to close just a hair shy of 105 today. So even though it was boring for us here, live streaming the earnings, uh, it turned out to be a more exciting event after the fact. And we are, of course, speaking of waiting for some earnings, we are waiting with bated breath for another big A tech company that is Amazon uh, to report after the close here today. They're closing pretty much a nickel above three the 313 strike and people pricing in as they are wont to do with Amazon pricing in some decent vol looking at about here just in the the weeklies which of course are dailies at this point listeners so i won't even bore you with terms like vol for a daily option uh we're looking at about it looks like about oh about 24 25 in that at the money straddle out there so people expecting some decent movement we'll see if it is perhaps uh, yet another apple that underwhelms in the initial move and then has some decent movement after the fact or if amazon is off to the races in the after hours we will wait and see. In the meantime, let's turn it over to the man from the great city state of St. Charles, Illinois. Uncle Mike, what caught your eye in today's sea of green? Well, what caught my eye is the fact that we didn't really go up that high from the open of the market today and on the, and the overall on the S&P. Uh, so, for example... Uh, I'm just looking at SPY. Uh, we opened at 194.62. And so by that number, uh, we closed at 194.93. So 
on the trading day, we're up three points. We were up a lot more. Uh, the high of the day was 196.20 on SPY. So I'm just looking at this and I'm seeing most of this rally today uh, wasn't today. It was just kind of a pre-market overnight session type of rally. And we had, we had the gap up. So on here, um, I hate to say anything that's not bullish. It just, it breaks my heart to do such a horrible thing, but uh, I actually got out of some calls today just because of the fact that we've had a nice little run and it's, I'm still bullish, but, and tomorrow, even if we are a little bit higher, I'll probably still get back in in some way, shape or form. Uh, but it's just kind of one of those situations to where we've had a nice little run and I really don't like letting good trades turn into bad trades if I can possibly help it. So you're not convinced we're going to go right back up and stick at that 2000 strike again that we have perhaps a little bit more downside between here and there. Uh, I think we're going to go to 3000 in the next couple of weeks, but I, that's what I think. But I, I'm, my trading rules forbid me from doing such from acting on such a thing, you know, being the bull that I am. But no, I do think that we're going to get it, it's hard because I'm just looking at over the course of the last few days in the marketplace. Uh, we have had since October 16th we have just been going straight up. And so over the course of the last week, the low on October 16th was 183, I'm sorry, 182.89. So we're up about 80 points on the S&P 500. And when looking at something like, I'm sorry, much more than that, uh, we're actually up over 110 points on the S&P 500. And so when you have a that fast of a rally that quickly, um, it's just hard for me to want to, be a bull right now just for the next few days but um you know, i think we're gonna end the year pretty well but just over the course of the next few days i'm a little bit concerned and what about one of your other big holdings of course also rallying about five percent since the last time we were all on here chatting about it has that caused you to perhaps revisit or reposition out there in apple or are you still pretty much long stock long put and just letting it roll Long stock, long put, letting it roll, looking to roll up the puts probably tomorrow, just going into the weekend. Um, it's it's funny that we've had such slow movement on Apple to the upside after the, as Mark Longo would put it, resounding meh for earnings uh, in terms of the movement of the, of the stock. But I, I think that now would be an opportunity uh, for a lot of people out there that hopefully if you're for the for the crowd out there that likes to do stuff. Uh, now would be a great time. I think this is a great opportunity to roll your puts up uh, because of the fact that we've had a rally today. Uh, the VIX is down uh, 7.5% on the day. So in a lot of cases, volatility is down. Now, of course, I'm just saying this from the broad market sense. This may be different for individual holdings that you have. But I think today is a great day to roll up your protective puts. I know I did. <laughs> there you go. Take advantage of those rallies to lock in some better better protection mr rock lobster a lot to sink your teeth into today what caught your eye in today's just explosion of upside in the market uh well it was the explosion of upside uh, i'm still what i'm still like what's the headline rally news i guess it's the uh it's it's the prolifer pol pol proliferation proliferation of like uh you know pre-open uh, algo buyers. I have no clue why everybody, I guess, well, for whatever reason, there is still a lot of bullish steam somewhere behind the market. Earnings are okay, but they're certainly starting to knock things. They're just, they're, they're doing a lot of buying. It's like play, everybody's playing catch up all of a sudden, like they missed something by not scooping it last week. Uh, when we had the, what was the reason again? Oh, Europe wasn't growing. There was Ebola and the the treasuries had a a multi year low in in yield. So I, I don't know what's changed from a week ago. I'm still shaking that out of my head. Okay, but uh, money is money, and and money is buying stocks again. But I do agree with Mike. There's a lot of volatility lately, and and what you're not is the volatility is not going away. So we sold off kind of hard yesterday for no real reason, kind of rallied today for no real reason. And I could see why Mike rolled some puts up. I did a lot of adjusting myself day before yesterday, just kind of rolling things up um, and being a little more aggressive with uh, some call sales against some stocks that I like uh, that I don't think are really that are kind of stretched out. 
but and that's that's what we got. Uh, we have a market I think that's moving a lot, and it's I think it's going to be hard for the VIX to break 15. I would be I would be hugely surprised if that happened tomorrow. Yeah, you know, we always talk about kind of the the biased nature of volatility and the way people look at volatility, and they they tend to dismiss upside movements as not being part of that volatility package. And yet we're moving pretty aggressively to the upside. So I hate to break it to you, listeners, but that is indeed volatility. And we're looking here now, uh, SPY having a 10-day realized vol still at 20. So we're talking substantial amounts of realized volatility in the marketplace. So you're right, Andrew. I would I would be surprised if we saw VIX, VIX cash at least uh, trending too much too much to the south at this point because there still is realized vol in the marketplace whether you want to count upside or not it still counts and so uh, so that is indeed vol looking at the other side of the coin the downside uh we're of course i mentioned at the top of the show we were waiting with bated breath for amazon they closed at 313 uh, 18 or so it looks like the number is out and the street not exactly smiling upon it it's down it was down close to 20 handles now it's down about 18 or so in the after hours down to about 295 or so and kind of been vacillating around that level so we'll see how that holds out like i mentioned uh, front month straddle front month front day straddle going out at about 24 25 bucks so uh, we'll see how this one lines up uh, compared to some recent earnings Uh, if it stays in this range i have a feeling it won't but if it stays in this range uh, some people could have been a wee bit disappointed or perhaps waving their hats in the air enthusiastically, depending on which side of the fence you'll fall. I should mention, too, I didn't mention earlier in the show, uh, we have Ford coming out before the Open tomorrow. So, of course, if you wanted to play Ford, hope you got your trades in, at least from an options perspective, because you're done now. It's going to come out before the Open. So closing at 1440, we'll pay attention to that one and see how that one moves as well. Ford having come off quite a bit off its highs recently it was getting up there i believe it got up to in the 17 handle range or so yeah about 1787 actually recently and now closing today 1440 so three dollars off those handles off those highs so uh, we'll see if ford can reclaim some of those we had gm reporting today and it wasn't overly enthusiastic it seems from an earnings perspective gm selling off about 1.2 percent on a day when the whole market was rallying so we'll see what we can expect from ford tomorrow Mr. Andrew, you say you were looking here at some at some Ford downside in the old pit chat no, today. We were looking at uh, Amazon downside. Couldn't decide on a trade. We were close. We were close, but it just at the end of the day, we ended up doing nothing. It was basically buying a straddle and selling some strangles uh, against it to finance it. And it looks like it would have it would have paid okay. But we wanted I wanted something a little better uh, than where they were pricing. So we just we just did nothing. We watched it go. Watched it go away. <laughs> Sometimes that is the best trade. You're right. These levels here in Amazon, uh, they're not as stratospherically high as we have seen in the past. It makes you want to come out as a screaming sell. They're not so cheap that you want to just enthusiastically buy with both hands. They're kind of somewhere in that middle range. So I could see it being a bit of hesitation as to uh, whether you want to, which side you want to come in on and work in your levels a little bit. And if you don't get filled, it's not the end of the world. Uh, that's uh, certainly a good lesson for all of our listeners at the end of the day. Meanwhile, it's time to move on to some more bizarre and weird activity. It's time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the Odd Block. everybody welcome to the odd block this is indeed the portion of the show where we break down the just downright unusual paper that we're seeing on the old street today going to kick things off uncle mike cover your ears sir perhaps just unplug from the show for a few minutes because we're going to talk about your your vietnam indeed it is time to talk about cisco ticker symbol of course csco closing today right around 23 half or so up about a little over one percent like the rest of the market today moving right along this is the name as you might expect does fairly well from an overall options perspective and doing more of late doing about sixty thousand contracts adv so fairly robust activity doing about ninety thousand today so some serious paper 
going up here in Cisco. What caught our eye this morning was a fairly, a little bit longer term anyway, out in the DEIS expiration cycle. And it was a pretty sizable chunk of puts that caught our eye to the tune of a 9,000 lot of the DEIS 23 puts uh, going up at the time for 53 cents. Uh, looks like paper doing, excuse me, 58 cents. Uh, paper doing them tied to stock, about a quarter of a million shares of stock going up there as well. And, of course, these are against open interest of just about 5,000 contracts. So pretty much opening paper as far as we can tell here. They went out 59 cents at 60. So uh, an interesting interesting gap up for them there. And, of course, you know, listeners, when you look at the trade outright and you look at it tied to stock, it becomes a little bit different beast when you're buying the puts and you're buying – when you're trading the puts and the stock, I should say – then you're doing a little bit different beast. You're pretty much just trading ball at that point. You're trading what amounts to be a straddle. This guy wants this underlying to move, and he wants it to move fairly aggressively, and he wants it to move between now and the Dece expiration cycle. Looking at a chart here of Cisco, and it hasn't been uh, the best month or so for Cisco. It's sold off from its highs right around the 25 handle all the way down to, it looks like it got down into the low 22 handle range or so and has bounced back a little bit, kind of hover in the middle of that range. This guy clearly thinking there is perhaps more movement to be had out here in Cisco. Mr. Rock Lobster, what's your take on this guy gobbling up some puts in stock here in Cisco? I, I would almost swear that was too soft learning from the last time he, you know, put on a Cisco position. So this time he, <laughs> he's going to, he's buying the puts ahead of time instead of later. That is an awful thing to say. Awful thing. Just rub salt in the poor man's wound, right now. I know. Well, after that, did you hear that scream? That 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 um, that scream from the depths <laughs> I did. of despair. I, I heard it all the way from St. Charles to here to downtown Chicago. <laughs> oh, it was painful <laughs> hearing such a thing. <laughs> it was primal. <laughs> and for those of you listening to the show, if this doesn't prove that we're honest people on this show in terms of admitting our our wins and our losses, Mark Longo still met, gives me a hard time about this trade for going on three years now. Yes, it's quite fun. I recommend all of you do it at home as well. Listen, he's, he's an game. evil, evil man. Have a drink. Play the drinking game. Have a drink whenever but, I mention Cisco. And but that game. means he has ah! to replace it with. <laughs> yeah, we so need you, some, have, uh, you know, we need some modern he's losers. He's trying to make fun of the Apple trades, but they've just been too good. So there's nothing to make fun of. <laughs> 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 oh, but for Cisco, I have a, this. This had all the hallmarks of I'm going to buy some puts in stock and see where Cisco goes. Um and they're buying it in the D cycle, and maybe they're looking uh, looking at the market's volatility, even though Cisco has none. And um, they are they are uh, they are putting on a protected strategy. Let's just call it that, and we'll see uh, and we'll see what happens with it. So, but they're looking for Cisco to move, and I guess at some point Cisco will. I think it's what has had a two dollar range all year. Um, I guess it can move, um, but. A lot I of that coming in the time lot, I would spend. On. <laughs> a lot of that coming in the last month or so, though, too. So at least from a near term perspective, it has moved a bit. Year long, it hasn't moved too much, but in the last month or so, it's it's had a bit of a vacillation range. Yep, I guess so. From twenty five down to twenty two and change. So yeah, I mean it 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 can it can move. It can move. All right, speaking of, say speaking of names that can move, we're talking talking cheapy biotechs. They have a habit of moving sometimes. And it wouldn't be the odd block without a cheapy bio taking up some space here. We're talking this time about Zio Farm Oncology Inc. Ticker symbol Z I O P. Closing today, two dollars and eighty-eight cents. Two dollars and eighty cents. Excuse me, up eight and a half percent, or about twenty-two cents on the day. So a robust day. Last time we saw Cisco move eight and a half percent. It's been quite a while. Uh, so this one does about oh about seven eight hundred contracts a day. Doing about ten x that. Doing about eighty two hundred contracts today so a lot of paper lighten up the old tape here in ziop and surprise surprise cheapy biotech what kind of paper did we see well we saw upside call buy-in listeners and a fairly sizable amount of them at that we saw when we profiled it the first time this morning we saw the dece four calls going up 2770 times for 45 cents paper buying that going up in one large block, all of that on two 
contracts. That's a whopping two listeners of open interest. As the day went on, we saw quite a few more piling on, roughly 2x, a total of 5,600 going up on the strike today. So some sizable upside and fairly out-of-the-money calls uh, going up here on good old Zyop. Uh, Looking here at the chart, it's been... Well, it did get up into the four range back in this summer, back in June, but it's been a while since it's danced with those levels. This person clearly thinking that Zyop is poised for a bit of a retracement to the upside. Senior Rock Lobster, what say you to our friend here who is ever enthusiastic, ever optimistic about good old Z-I-O-P? Uh, you know, they're doing the biotech, uh, the, they're doing the biotech tango. Uh, which means you you try to guess when they're going to have a drug announcement. You buy lots of expensive out-of-the-money calls and hope for a home run, which is probably how a lot of biotech investors, you know, put money into biotech companies. <laughs> you know, that okay, that looks promising, and they give them some money, and, you know, one out of 10 of them becomes a home run, and it pays for the next 10 or 20 of them. So, and uh, nine out of the 10 of them that don't come in end up being clients. <laughs> and you then they end up going to Tucson saying, can you help me not <laughs> buy any more biotech out of the money calls? So uh, these are pretty big blocks of calls, uh, large size. And, uh, you know, clearly you need to do this December cycle. Uh, Xyopharm Oncology has to get their drug, their drug thing going, uh, but quick to make this pay. So and that's where we find ourselves with it. Good old upside spec in Xyopharm Oncology, Inc., ticker symbol Z-I-O-P. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a scenario where I would, uh, I would, I would endorse a trade like this. <laughs> it's not many. It's just, uh, you're right, this is just one of those totally swing for the fences, totally, shall we say, less sophisticated type trades we profile here on the old odd block. But hey, size money. Not always the smart money listeners, as we profiled here time and again. If you've learned nothing else from this show, aside from the fact that Uncle Mike hates Sisto, it is that the size money is not always the smart money. All right, we're going to wrap things up here in the old odd block. Wouldn't be the old odd block without also a broad a broad ETF to play with. This time we're going to play with the Spider S&P Metals and Mining ETF, ticker symbol XME. Closing today at around 34 half, up about half a buck or about 1.7% on the day. It's the name that does decent paper for an odd block victim, about 4,000 contracts a day, doing about 6,000 today. So a, a decent pop comparatively here for XME. And what caught our eye was actually some fairly longer term paper. This gets the award for the longest term paper of the day, at least from the odd block here today. We got to roll all the way out to Jan 2016 uh, to find this one to the tune of when we profiled them this morning, 4,700 uh, of the Jan 2016 43 calls going up uh, for a buck 57. They went up in one pretty much one sizable block, so 4,700 in one chunk. Not terribly surprising given the fact that he's going so far out. A little bit illiquid on uh, on the name looks like it's a call buyer going up with some stock against it uh there are there is some open interest on this strike though to the tune of 4500 uh so this is someone either piling in adding some more or perhaps deciding to close out i had a hard time seeing why he'd be closing out already on the jan 2016 call but say la vie crazier things have happened mr rock lobster which way do you fall on our friend here in XME? Is he piling in or is he closing out? Um, I thought they were, I thought it was just enough open interest to be new paper, a couple hundred, but um, the, the, cause I thought I saw 4,500 over 4,700 or something, something. Yeah, of there's that a couple nature. hundred more going up today. So, you know, usually you wouldn't see them uh, closing and then adding a couple hundred more contracts. <laughs> But what, what was curious was, you know, how, because the trade went up posting uh, the offer. And so if they're buying those calls and selling stock, I mean, do you really want to buy, um, do you really want to buy, uh, volatility is kind of at the top of the range in here lately. 
you're buying a Jan 2016 uh, versus a calls versus an underlying sale when we're at, you know, you know, one year volatility is pretty much at the peak for this name. So this was a head scratcher. The only thing I can think of, right? Cause it's, it's literally at a one year peak uh, or a two year peak for volatility. It's pretty, it's pretty high. So, I mean, why do they, why do they, why is somebody buying juice way up here and then selling stock on a option that's 10 handles out of the money? The only thing I can think of is, uh, you know, somehow it's getting, it got marked weird or something, or the customer is just, you know, I want, um, I want to buy these real expensive calls and sell stock on a ratio and see how that works, which I've never really seen it work. Yeah, I was going to say, probably not well. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I don't, uh, I've never, I, I mean, it's anything is possible. But when you go out that far long term, you buy volatility in the, you know, upper, upper decile of the range and you sell stock against it, looking for a big move. Um, you know, they traded the, what, the 43s? So somehow it must have been marked wrong. I can't imagine anybody would want to do that. But as you say, c'est la vie. It's their money. They can go knock themselves out. But <laughs> Yet another example. Size money, not often the smart money. Uh, yeah, I will perhaps lean in your category. I'll give this guy. I'll be, give this guy the benefit of the doubt that it was incorrectly marked because this is this would be an odd one. Otherwise, it'd be odd for closing. It's even odder for opening <laughs> ten handles out here and doing it with stock. Uh, it, it, it's got to lock in that two year high on vol. I don't know if you know that, Andrew. That, that's a good. <laughs> that's a good level. You want you want to hedge that right away and get that locked in on your sheets because uh, that that's a good one yeah that's that's a head scratcher that's why we put them out there for you listeners you guys can play the home game parse them follow along let us know what you think about some of these crazier trades because this one is an odd one maybe a scenario where you would consider doing something like this i can't think of one myself but maybe you have an idea why you'd want to pile in here and do this let us know we'd love to hear from you meanwhile the viceroy is not here but how do we make up for that listeners we make up for that by humiliating uncle mike Tussaw with the trading patterns guessing game yes it's time once again for the Express Block. The Express Block. Brought to you by Options Express by Charles Schwab. Options Express by Charles Schwab lets you trade where and when you want for every level of trading. From advanced charting, free daily trading ideas, and free educational resources. Options Express by Charles Schwab is the online broker for all traders. Best of all, Options Express by Charles Schwab lets you trade stocks, options, and futures all in a single account. On powerful yet easy use trading platforms including mobile devices. Visit OptionsExpress.com for your free account. Options Express by Charles Schwab is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. All right, everybody, and welcome to the Express Block. This is indeed the portion of the show where in the Viceroy's absence, we like to play around on the old Options Express platform and check out some of the cool tools that they have there. And one of our favorites if you've ever listened to the show before, is indeed the Trading Patterns Tool listeners. You're going to find that by surfing on over, logging in, of course. You have to be a client to do this. Logging in, clicking on the toolbox at the top of the site there, then scrolling on down under the Idea Tools to the Trading Patterns Tool. Click on that, and then enter any underlying that you choose to your heart's content and see what else the people out there on the old OX platform, the good clients of OX, are also trading. And since Uncle Mike, you've had a bit of a rough go of it of late here on the old trading patterns guessing game. I don't know if you listened to the last show, Andrew, but Uncle Mike is pretty much over two now on the trading patterns game. He got a few last time, at least to put himself on the board. I did get on the board last. He got time, on the board least. last time, so I will give you the uh, the pride of place this time, Uncle Mike. You get to choose the underlying. Ah, uh, let's go with Amazon. A good one, a very timely one as well, and I will leave it up to your own. St. Charles, city-state honor, sir, that you are not logging in and playing the home game yourself to get to all. If you start slinging the number one answer right away, I'll know. I'll know you're up to something, sir. Ah, interesting. Okay, so here I we are. I have to admit the thought crossed over. my mind, but I'm an ethical <laughs> guessing game player. I, I can th see maybe the third time maybe you being tempted to, uh, to go that way. I will give you guys I, – actually, I won't give you any hints up front. Uh, but Uncle Mike, in deference to your performance of late – and trying to help you boost it. I will give you also the first guess. Your floor is yours, sir. I'll go with Microsoft. Double earnings play. Microsoft. Double earnings play. Let us see here. And, of course, that would be a good name to uh, highlight here because good old Softy 
is uh, also having some fun today. I neglected to mention them at the top of the show as well. Microsoft rallying a bit here in the after hours. Yeah, they're hours. looking good. Yeah, closing at 45, up about a buck 50 in the after hours, trading right around 46 half or so uh, listeners. So Microsoft perhaps uh, bucking the trend here. But surprisingly, not anywhere here on the top 10 for Amazon, Uncle Mike. So unfortunately, oh. you are uh, 0 for 1 so far. Mr. Rock Lobster, let's see if you can jump in. What's your pick for the number one correlated underlying to Amazon here on the OX platform? To Amazon, number one correlated to Amazon. Uh, that's kind of old school technology. I'm going to say Apple. When in doubt, any time on this show, I don't care what the hell we're talking about, just throw Apple out there. You got about a 70 delta of that actually paying off, and you are right. Mr. Andrew, number two here on the list, Apple. <laughs> Uncle Mike, he stole your thunder with your own holding. Oh, so my gosh. Uh, he, he came to my backyard I know. and crapped on my porch. <laughs> that's I that's pretty you. painful. <laughs> Let's see if you can, you, can, you can recover from that, sir. I'll give you two guesses to make yourself feel better. Go for give it. Give him three. <laughs> no, I'm just going to take one. I'll go with Facebook. Facebook, a good guess. See, now you're starting to learn how the game works, sir. And, again, retail heavy names – Facebook and Apple, typically on that list. And Facebook is number four. So well done. Uh, Andrew still has the higher spot, but at least you're on the board now. And probably that's probably the highest level you've gotten, I think, in this game so far, at least in the last few outings. So you're on number four. Well done. We'll see if you can uh, continue. All right, we'll turn the floor over to the Rock Lobster, see if he continue his, his reign of triumph here. I, I'm going to have to say, actually, um, I'm going to have to say the spy. Does that have to be specific or like an E-mini or something like that? Uh, well, since you said both of them, I will, I will, I'll make your official pick, Spy, which is number nine on the list. Also a good guess. But if you had said the E-mini, then you would have had the number one pick on the list. The, no, <laughs> the number one pick is the E-mini uh, S&P 500, the Dece E-mini, the Dece future there, the Dece contract. So uh, if you had said that, I can't officially give it to you because you didn't really say it, but it is kind of in the same category. Maybe I'll give you a half point for that one. Oh, oh, that's Umbridge over there with a capital U. <laughs> <laughs> but Uncle Mike, he's cleaning it up. You got you to make yourself, make a presence known here. So what's your, what's your guess? I'll go with Tesla. Ah, see, he's learning the game now. He's learning the game. When talking heavily hyped retail stocks, you got to throw Tesla into the mix. It is indeed number six. You're on the board, sir, for number four and number six. A Andrew is on for number two, number nine, and half credit there at number one. No, you don't get half credit for number one. I that's not right. No, uh -oh, he gave him. No, he's taking umbrage, sir. We may have to put that one out to the I judges. Know. We'll put that out to the listeners. See what they say. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Mister Rock Lobster, continue, sir. You see if you can continue your reign of triumph. Uh, let's see, Amazon. Yeah, well, let's see through today. I, I'm 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 in my head. I'm back and forth. I'm gonna say GoPro. Ah, a good guess, but no, not on the list. So ah. not in the top ten. So a swing and a miss, finally, for the Rock Lobster. Uncle Mike, here's your chance. Take the ball and run with it. What is your pick, sir? Let's see. I think I'm going to go with B-A-B-A. -B -A. Aha. See? Not Boeing, double Boeing. <laughs> double Boeing, yes. You see, you're learning the game. Either that or you're cheating horribly, one way or the other. But it's Baba, number five. So you pick now the number four, number five, and number six. Number four, Facebook. Number five, Baba. And number six, Tesla. So Uncle Mike, climbing up the ranks here again, making a much stronger showing than last time. Andrew, let's see if you can, you can come back from that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what I've noticed about all these picks? They're all up on the day. Uh, I mean, obviously, Amazon is not because it's down 30. Maybe people are finally wondering that that's a giant shell game being run over there uh, by Amazon. But if they haven't come to that conclusion by now, only there ever are. That that, that uh, stock has defied you that. You know what? For it was time. kind of a busy day. I'm going to say everybody was looking for Google. Yes, number 10 on the list. Uh, Google, of course, number 10. So we have number one, the E Mini. Number two, Apple. Number four, Facebook. Number five, Baba. Number six, Tesla. And number nine, Spy. Number 10, Google. So a couple more slots. One guess each more. Uh, Uncle Mike, we shall start with you. Where do you fall on your remaining picks, sir? Illumina. I-L-M-N. Well, that is an interesting one. And unfortunately, horribly wrong. It is not on the top ten here, sir. <laughs> Illumina. So, Illumina. That, that's a flyer. 
Uh, I'll give you points for a flyer. Either that or trying to prove you're not reading along on the, uh, on the, on the trading pattern screen yourself. Uh, Mr. Andrew, what's your pick, sir? Close us out with a winner. I'm going to go. I'm going to do a little non sequitur. How about American Airlines? Interesting. Also horribly wrong. So here we go. <laughs> so we have. So let's see. I don't know how to parse the winner here because Andrew got the number two and he gets partial credit, at least for an acknowledgement to the number one spot. Uh, no one guessed the number three one, which is the, uh, the Dow Jones Mini, the Deese 2014 contract. Uh, so the E-Mini number one, the Dow Jones Mini number three, uh, Facebook number four, an Uncle Mike pick. Number five, Baba, Uncle Mike pick. Number six, Tesla. No one guessed number seven, Netflix. Number eight, Twitter. Number nine, Spy. Number 10, Google. So Andrew got what did he get? He got three and perhaps a half. Uncle Mike got one, two, three, one, two, three. And he got three as well. So... Oh. But my three are greater than his three, his two of his three. Uh, that's true. I am the winner. I don't <laughs> This is a I have declared hard one victory. to parse. It depends if we give him a fractional point for the number one slot or not. If you guess that no, fractional point. No, it means point. nothing because I had four, five, and six. That's greater than nine and ten. <laughs> and number two. Umbridge. <laughs> but number two and number one. All right, we'll see. We'll leave it at, 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 a, at a bitter, bloody draw for now. Listeners, I'll let you weigh in on who you think I should have protest. taken it. I protest. This game is rigged. <laughs> <laughs> he, got, he had at least a partial claim to the number one spot as well. So. Well, I, ne- next time okay, I would that's like that. That's, <laughs> like saying, that's like saying, well, I would have made that trade. I'm going to call up the, the CBOE and tell them since I would have made that trade, then, then they'll let me keep the money. If only the Viceroy were here. We'll, we'll separate. We'll separate. <laughs> From now on, the spy from the 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 uh, mini futures. All right, so, so different different categories. Spy, e mini, the big futures. They all have to be guessed separately. You can't uh, you can't lump them all together. Uh, so there we go, listeners. That'll be the way going forward. If only Don't we got Twitter. That was kind of lame. Yeah, yeah, no Twitter, no Netflix. I was surprised at that. Um, Facebook, of course, good pick. If only the vice were here to to be the arbiter of who actually won. But I, I shall give it a tie just to avoid any further umbrage. Meanwhile, listeners, it is indeed Thursday. That means it's time for some of your questions as well. It's time to keep on rolling right on into the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, listeners, as the man said, this is indeed time for the mail block, time for you guys to make your questions and comments and insights known to us as well as to your fellow listeners. No shortage of ways for you guys to do that. Of course, surf on over to the website, post your questions or comments there. Indeed, you can also use our website feedback form there. A lot of you like to use that. And, of course, just put question for the option block in there somewhere so we know which show you're referring to. You can also find us on Twitter, twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or find us via email questions at the options insider.com. No shortage of ways for you guys to find us. And we also baked it all into the mobile app there to make it even easier for you guys to play the home game. All right, here we go. First question comes from George Orsos. I believe that's how that's pronounced. He writes, uh, dear sir, I'd like to ask you to inform me about a cash account. I think, I'm guessing I'm just going to go out on a limb and say English is not George George's first language, so I'll try to uh, clean this up a little bit for him. He writes, I heard that a trader who has a cash account can trade an unlimited number of day trades even if his or her fund uh, is below $25,000. Is that correct? I look forward to your response. Thank you. Best regards, George. Uh, well, George, no. <laughs> I think in a nutshell, no, that is not correct. I don't know of... Uh, uh, of any um, any scenario where you could unlimited and not come into eventually into some of those pattern type day trading rules, this would be a good one for the viceroy who who loves that kind of nuance into the system. I don't know, Rock Lobster, Uncle Mike, you know of any scenario where someone could do something like this? Yes. Uh, it wouldn't be a cash account, but it would be a futures account. Oh, well, uh, you if go. you're looking to do that much day trading to where it's an issue, uh, I would recommend looking into trading futures and futures options because you can trade and trade and trade. And not only is it allowed, but it is encouraged. Well, not really encouraged, but it is allowed to trade as frequently as you want. It's like Chicago voting. I like it. Uncle Mike's starting to learn the way these games are played. When the question is, is bizarre and worded weird, then you just go outside the realm of the question to give them a different answer. But it still works. A futures account would apply, indeed. I was trying to stick within these clear outlines given us 
by our listener, sir. But you can't do it that way. So. But I come up with different things. <laughs> <laughs> you're just after me today. You're getting me with Cisco. You're rigging the, the games. Good gosh, man. Hey, you know, you got to do something here when you're in the, the big cheer to keep it fun time and again. But, yeah, good question, George. And Uncle Mike is right. That future is a pretty much the only way I could think of that you could really uh, do this and get around some of those uh, those pattern rules that are out there, which are kind of annoying. I do agree with you, taking umbrage at those. But c'est la vie. Uh, not, exactly, uh, not exactly an easy thing to do. All right, next up, we got a fun one here. So put your listening ears on Andrew and Uncle Mike. We got a question here from Tony. He writes, Mark, love the show. Well, glad to hear that, Tony. He goes on to write, I was lucky enough to have a fairly significant weekly put spread position in DIA this week. He puts in parentheses, long puts in the, at the 166 to 167, short at the 161 to 162 half strikes. I was making good money on Wednesday and ran into a problem. Uh, the bid-ass spread on my long puts were so wide, I couldn't close out, roll, or adjust the trade. I thought about buying futures contracts to hedge my delta risk and suck out the theta? <laughs> I like this question. Is there any other strategy to adjust or hedge a successful trade without getting haircut on the executions? Should I just calculate the extrinsic value, add a spread, and put a limit order in for the long leg? Is it always harder to close out a spread trade in a volatile market, i.e., if I want to close out a spread trade, does one person have to want to enter the same trade, or can the trade go to two counterparties? Well, this... Clearly came in last week, listeners, when the market was in the midst of a great tumult, uh, particularly on the day that he rode in where the market was down significantly, seemed like the bottom was falling out of everything. And as he discovered, and as I'm sure many of you out there have discovered as well, when things like that are happening, when the market's falling out of things, uh, market makers tend not to know where things are. So what happens as a result, they tend to get a little bit wider. And that's what he encountered here. Uh, he, he saw if he wanted to get done in that environment to execute his trade, he had to play with a much wider bid-ass spread. That's part of the beast. It's the nature of the beast, unfortunately. Uh, we used to do that as market makers all the time. When things are uncertain and you don't know, what's your answer? You widen out because you just don't know. Um, in those scenarios, as you've seen, you know, you can try to come in and split the difference, but people are not going to be heavily motivated uh, to trade with you in those types of environments because they're widening out for a reason. They kind of don't want to get hit. They need to try to figure out what it is or at the least get rewarded uh, to get hit. So you're not going to have a lot of people giving a, a huge incentive to step up, which is an environment where you might want something like, you. oh, please step up and fill me, but they're not going to do that. So you probably have to hit bids and lift offers, which again, is something you don't want to do here, as you're saying, in your example. So First question, is it always harder to close out a spread trade in the volatile market? Yeah, pretty much, because it's, these things, when they're getting wide like that, as you've noticed, your spread just gets crushed. And even taking it off, you could have had a spread that was a big winner. But if you're looking at it now and the bid-ass spread is just so wide that it's not really worth your time to take it off yet, as you discovered, that is definitely a problem. Now, the other two questions you're asking here, if you want to close a spread trade, uh, does one person have to want... Uh, to enter the same trade, or can the trade go to two counterparties? Uh, there's a lot of different ways that kind of spread can go up. It doesn't have to be one person taking off the spread. That's probably the easiest way for it to go up, but it can go up. There could be an order in the book, and the market makers could f f that fills one leg, and they could take the other side and just fill it that way. There's a lot of different ways that these pieces could, could go up. The broker could maybe match it up with a smart router with some other orders they have in their system and, and execute it that way. There's a lot of different ways these trades can be matched up. It doesn't have to go out and find an immediate counterparty for both legs. Legs. Of course, that would be an ideal scenario. Again, in an environment like you're talking, probably going to be hard to find one of those who wants to do the exact same spread that you want to do the other way. So the trade can go to, to multiple counterparties. Um, anything else? We, he's asked a couple other questions here as well. He wants to talk about um, uh, the extrinsic value and adding a spread. So this is a, a pretty interesting one. A lot to sink your teeth into here. Maybe uh, Mr. Rock Lobster will let you go first since Uncle Mike uh, jumped in on the last one. What's your take here? for our friend Tony, who got bit by the volatility bug in last week's markets. He's, he's still recovering from the umbrage he took. Yes, he, he, got, he took some umbrage. Um, but what I would say here is, you know, when the market is pitching like that, extrinsic value is a, is a let's just call it a harsh mistress at this point, <laughs> uh, because... Um, when realized vol is like 33% or 35% or whatever, and the VIX is trying to, is trying to bring the 30 cash register, um, 
there isn't really much, there is no such thing as extrinsic value anymore. There is, there is a parity level, but those puts are still gonna trade at some level greater than parity. And the whole idea is how much over, over that extrinsic value, nobody really knows, right? I mean, there's, there's the marketplace, but you know that, that premium over parity for your put will be somewhat close to whatever the call is trading for. So if you want to get out of the market in the bottom, first thing I would suggest is limit orders, uh, number one. Uh, put the limit in ahead of time and let the market get to it. Um, most of you are like, okay, the market's tanking. It looks bad. It's much easier to get executed if you have a limit order in and the market kind of rips through it than it is to have the mark, you know, we crash and then you put your put in there. And if you know you don't hit the timing very good, it won't quite catch the electronic eyes on whatever the um, whatever the liquidity providers are using to execute the trade. So that's that's what I would say about the deep leg of the trade. Now, obviously, you had a spread on. So you know, you still put in a spread with a limit order. Now, as volatility increases the value of your spreads actually going to decline a little bit because the short leg is going to blow up a little more relative to your long leg. So it's a lot harder to get the price you want for a spread in a high volatility environment. You're like, I should be getting more for this. The problem is, is since all the deltas go toward 50, you're not getting anything for it, right? Which is the whole, um, which is how spreads work. So what I could suggest for you is this, you could calculate the delta and try to buy an in the money call if you can't execute this. All of a sudden you're like, well, I'm short 50 deltas, right? So if you buy an in the money call, uh, you know, I would say a very in the money call that doesn't have as little uh, premium as exposure as possible, at least there is some limit to how much you're paying up there to get out. Um, or because you don't want to have, even when the market's pitching like that, you know, you have a 60, if you, let's say you're trading the 66, 61 uh, puts, uh, I'm sorry, put spread. And then, you know, the diamonds traded actually, you know, into the 15 handle, right? So you didn't really want to leave that other leg open. So you're never going to get as much for a spread as you think you're going to get one relatively far away from expiration or two when the vol gets really high. So you either take your profits, what you get, try to put in on what you think is a marketable spread and execute it. Or you say, you know what? The trade has a delta and I'm going to go try to buy my deltas in another way. Um, and that's really, you know, that's really all you can do if you do not get an offer out there into the marketplace. Um, and, and that's what you have just because when the vol's so high, everything gets, everything gets a little sketchy. You know, that's uh, it's a good point. This is very much the, the counterpoint or the same question to someone who wrote in, what was it, a month or two ago, saying, hey, my spread went my way, but too soon, and I still have a lot of time left to go, and it hasn't moved the way I thought it would. This is very much the same type question, only vo substitute vol in for time, and it's the same thing. Your, your spread, uh, you haven't, you, 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 he, he didn't want to take it off yet, and you can't get it off in that market, but it's a similar type, uh, type environment, similar type problem. Uh, Uncle Mike, uh, we got a few minutes left here. Anything you want to add here for our friend goes by the uh, mysterious handle of Tony? No, Tony, I think uh, it's difficult to improve upon perfection, so I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, my God. Wow. No umbrage <laughs> at all for the, uh, for the slight drubbing you gave him in the, in the trading patterns guessing game, sir. Interesting. Oh, Interesting. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I aim to surprise, baby. <laughs> Great question, Tony. I hope it worked out for you. Maybe write into us and let us know how you finally got out of it. Did you wait? Uh, hopefully you didn't wait too long because the markets did rebound in the subsequent sessions and those put spreads wouldn't have looked as good. But yeah, this is this is people discovering the other side of spread trading and we're seeing it play out here in our mailbox. Fortunately or perhaps unfortunately, we're glad you guys are all out there using spreads. It's the best way to go. But as you see, sometimes uh, as the issues you guys have outlined, it's not always the easiest thing and you don't always get the values you think you, you deserve. <laughs> the market is a fickle mistress as Andrew alluded to, and its intrinsic value is an ethereal prospect at best. 
sometimes. So uh, let's just leave it at that. Great questions. We got to keep on rolling, though. Listeners are into a very quick around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, welcome to the Around the Block. This is indeed the portion of the show where we tell you what we're watching for the rest of this week into the weekend. Mr. Rock Lobster, we'll start with you, and I guess you can't leave perfection the way it is because you have more to add for our friend Tony. No, I did. I uh, A friend of mine who was an extremely, you know, a uh, large eight-figure successful OEX trader um, in his day would told me early, he's like, uh, as a young trader, you know, when you when you want to get out and when the market wants to let you out are not necessarily at the same time. And he had no problem giving up, you know, a nickel, a dime or whatever to unwind his position when he wanted to. So you just, you have to be cognizant of the fact that just because you want to get out doesn't mean that a whole lot of other people want to get out. And sometimes, you know, to, to capture that profit, you have to make sure, especially when uh, options with a short time period, you know, you, you have to give up a little bit to get out and be done and take your money and say, thank you very much. Well so, said, uh, sir. Well said. Now, what are you watching for the rest of this week into the weekend? Uh, just the bizarreness. You know, we got Amazon down $33, a solid 10% now. Um, the airlines... Uh, moving pretty good. I, I'm mostly just curious. I think realize volatility is going to stay, you know, kind of at this level for a little bit. And I think it does, it does give us some trading opportunities. I think it's selling some out of the money juice now is starting to look a little more interesting. Um, but I, I'm, let's just say I'm doing it only uh, sporadically. I'm not dipping my toes in, uh, adding a lots of new stuff right now in any any big way shape or form yes amazon pretty much beyond the limits of its straddle to the downside and microsoft right at the level of its straddle to the upside so each of them testing their bounds in different ways uncle mike what are you watching for the rest of this week sir uh not too much the rest of this week i'm out of a i'm out i'm down a lot of deltas right now just uh want to be careful going into the weekend and then uh get back at it next week continue to watch this tis the season continuing to watch yeah you can curl back up in your cocoon until uh, the next big fruit company announcement right so you're pretty much done yeah markets are gonna go down and i'm just not gonna i'm gonna be in cash nothing's gonna happen right <laughs> it's that easy there we go good stuff all right listeners that's gonna do it for the around the block segments also gonna do it for this episode of the option block but before we go as always let me check in with each of my cohorts here see what they're cooking up that may interest you Starting off with you, Senior Lobster, what's coming down the pike in the land of the pit? Well, uh, everybody, of course, is going to be listening to this on Friday, but Mark is giving a using volatility to trade direction today at 8 p.m. Eastern time. If you just say Andrew at optionpit.com, write me a note. Uh, we'll send you a copy of the webinar if you cannot get into it. Uh, and then we will be having a, uh, a helping people use volatility to trade direction a little more regular session in uh, early November, uh, which will probably cost around 47 bucks. But our last one was uh, fully subscribed. I ex expect this one to be fully subscribed with different people. All Option Pit clients that are uh, Option Pit Live or higher get all of our webinars uh, for free. So it's a good opportunity to understand how volatile, and just like the question here with this listener, uh, the viewer mail was, you know, what the volatility does makes a big difference whether you understand how it works or not. And as the listener found out, it makes it a lot harder or easier to enter or exit trade. So um, you want to kind of try to put that into your thinking prior to uh, entry. And that's, of course, what Mark is going to help people do on our webinar tonight. You guys are webinar fiends over there, over there at Option Pit, Webinar Central these days. Uncle Mike, you guys used to be webinar fiends on the old webinar train. You since have migrated over to the land of live events. What's cooking in the land of RCM these days? Oh, well, we have the event in Miami coming up in December still. But uh, in the meantime, I'm doing a lot of stuff. If you would like to do stuff with me, give me a call, 312-212-3531, or send me an email, m2saw at rcmam.com. 
Yeah, and you and Uncle Mike could bang your heads together on a scenario like our listener just sent in and how the best way to get out of a spread like that. Should you just sell the long leg, do the hard leg, try to get the whole thing done? Uh, how, how should you best unwind that? All, all sorts of fun scenarios that Uncle Mike could help walk you through. And, of course, we couldn't be joined by the Viceroy today, but all this good stuff comes to you courtesy of the folks over there at Options Express by Charles Schwab. So do us a favor, do them a favor, surf on over, kick the tires. If you're not a client already, become one. At the very least, try out a paper trading account and let them know, hey, I heard about you guys on the old Option Block. All those cool tools I'm talking about are all there available for free if you're a client. And even cooler, all the education stuff that Alex is always talking about, all the live events, all that stuff is available pre-login. You don't even have to be a client to get access to that stuff. So that is really cool. Surf on over to optionsexpress.com, kick the tires, and tell them that we sent you. They'll like it. We'll like it. Everyone will be happy at the end of the day. And on behalf of The Rock Lobster and Uncle Mike and, of course, myself, I want to thank all of you out there in the listening audience for downloading and streaming and subscribing to the show. And, of course, for sending in such great top-notch questions. Keep them coming, and we'll see you next time right here on The Option Block. The Option Block was brought to you by Options Express by Charles Schwab. Don't spend time worrying about your broker at Options Express by Charles Schwab. Security, stability, and account protection are the most important responsibilities to our customers. Secure account access, enhanced financial protection, entrusted with over $7 billion in customer assets, established financial stability. Options Express by Charles Schwab lets you trade with confidence. Stocks, options, and futures all in one account. Trade with a specialist. Visit www.optionsexpress.com to open your free account. Options Express by Charles Schwab is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com. 